Hello and welcome to a new edition of Ease Art Tips. Today I'm going to talk about some pretty mysterious terms, resolution, DPI, and PPI. But first, what is resolution and why does it matter? Everybody's looked at a mountain range far, far away. It kind of turns blue and it gets a little bit fuzzy. You lose detail. The atmosphere is affecting how much in focus those mountains that are far away are. In this case, not very much in focus. It's also turning them that lovely shade of blue. But what if the opposite is true? Let's look at a different mountain range. Let's say those mountains that are far away are in high definition and you can see every little detail and everything in the foreground is fuzzy. I'll make the foreground even fuzzier to make my point. Your eye is going to go to that mountain in the back. So it's telling you that that information is more important. Well, you can think about the image in the background as being in focus and the image in the foreground as being out of focus. Or another term in photography that they use is actually bokeh, where part of the image is more in focus and part is out of focus to direct your eye or to make sure that whatever they don't want you looking at is not really clear. Like in this coffee cup that's in focus in the foreground and out of focus in the background. In the world of scanning and art, we call this resolution. But what happens if this isn't straightforward? What happens if there are some things in the foreground that are fuzzy, some things in the background that are fuzzy, and some things in the foreground that are in focus, and other things in the background that are out of focus? What happens when you get mixed resolutions? I'll show you an example with my Merlin. Having things in focus in the background, or having things in focus in the foreground, tells us what we're supposed to be looking at. Focus tells us where things belong in space. What becomes problematic in illustrations is when somebody doesn't understand what resolution is and has fuzzy resolution items mixed in with high resolution items so that you can't tell what's supposed to be going back and what's supposed to be coming forward. For instance, I've mess messed up a few things in my Merlin image here. You can see his hat is in super high resolution, which doesn't look like it goes with the illustration anymore. The crow sitting on Merlin's shoulder is also somewhat fuzzy. If you look at his face, his face is in resolution, but the crow isn't. So now we're wondering, well, what, what's in front and what's in back? So when you mix up resolutions, it makes for a very confusing image that your, your viewer can't understand. And I've said it before, confusion is a bad word in artwork. If your viewer is confused, the image isn't working. That's why it's so important to make sure you understand resolution and you put the various resolutions in the right places. So how do you know if something's going to be in the proper resolution or not? You check out its DPI. What is DPI and PPI? Well, most of you will have something on your computer that uh, is either called ca image capture or some version of a scanning software on your computer. Mine is hooked up to a Canon TS8300. You might have to actually hook this up, but nowadays these are pretty um, easy to do. You just click on what you see come available and it will set it up for you. What you'll get when you do that is this interface right here. Now you can see that there's nothing there right now. So I'm going to go to one thing because I want to have a little bit more control than just these basic controls that are showing right now. So I'll say show details. And you can say, see overview scan is automatically going ahead and just giving me a preview of what's on the scanner. So this is my Merlin image that I did in uh, pencil a while back. So we're going to uh, just work with him for a little while to see what we're doing. Now let's look over in the right column because there's several different settings that we can choose. You can choose color, black and white, or text. They're pretty straightforward. If you're going to be uh, scanning text, text is set up to be able to tell the thicks and thins of an actual font or typeface the best. So that's what you would want to do for an all text document. Black and white is going to be a smaller file. There's not as much information for it to save, but that can be good if you're doing something that's just a really dumped down image that you don't need it to be high resolution. It's not going to a printer. It's just something that you're quickly sharing with somebody. Now, if you're doing an image like what you're looking at right now, even though it's in black and white, I would still choose color because there's nuances in the grays. So I'm going to choose color. And here's the big mysterious term we're talking about today, resolution. Right now it's set to 75, but let's talk about what is resolution. Right now it says DPI. Well, DPI is dots per inch. 
That's from the old days of newspapers when they would literally print a yellow dot, a red dot, a blue dot, and a black dot to create the colors that you would see on a newspaper. So you can only fit so many dots in an inch. And so DPI, dots per inch, became the value of how many dots you needed for the person looking at the image to be able to decipher what they were looking at. Well, nowadays, it's not just dots per inch, it's PPI, pixels per inch, because in the digital world, pixels are the equivalent to dots. So whether you see DPI or PPI, it's basically the same thing. But D stands for dots, P stands for pixels. Now, the other thing to know is what are the standard DPIs for you to look at when you're in either a digital environment or in a print environment. Now, most print files that you look at when you're looking at a magazine or a book or you're looking at a photograph, that's going to be 300 DPI. And unfortunately, these are just numbers you've just got to remember. So you can see that if you click on the drop-down menu, you get several different selections. 300 is what you want to use if it's going to be for print, for everybody to be able to see it. Now, it's different in a digital environment. When you're looking at a screen, you don't need as much information. So for, say, a JPEG or a GIF, you actually can use 75. Actually, 72 was one of the, main, the first numbers that came out, and then later 96, which I know this is jumping around, and it's like, where did they come up with these random numbers? I'm not really sure actually where they came from and I don't know why this one is saying 75 but 75 is a good middle ground number so that's fine. So if all I was doing was scanning this to use online say on my website or some such I would probably choose 75. Most of the images that you see online are going to be about 72 dpi. So what about all these other numbers? When would you use those? Well let's say you've got a JPEG that you're going to have to send something to a client and it's just something that they need to be able to print out really quick, sign, stick in a document folder, or you know, to file away, no big deal. As long as everything's readable generally for filing purposes, 150, 200, 250 will probably be fine. And it makes this, the file smaller so that you can send it around to people without clogging the email pipes. Now 600 is something I'm hearing more and more from printers. I'm hearing from some of the, my clients that I work with that they want a 600 DPI file. Now, they don't really need that if they're going to print my image at 100%. However, if they want to, say, cut out this crow from on top of Merlin's shoulder and use it someplace else or maybe enlarge it a little bit, then they might want a 600 DPI so that they have a little bit more freedom with the image. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. So let's say... I drew something really small and I do this a lot because you can end up with a really nice line quality if you make an image small and then you blow it up so that you get that line quality. Well you don't want the line quality to get blurry because when you're talking about DPI let's say you've got 300 dots in an inch. When you enlarge that image there's still only 300 dots in, in that whole image even if you've enlarged it to say 5 inches there's still only 300 dots that's when you get a blurry image. And you've probably all seen that on the internet. Um, so how to avoid that is you scan it at a much higher DPI. So let's say I've got an image that is five inches wide. If I'm going to want to print it at, let's say, 10 inches wide, I might scan it at 600 DPI because by the time it enlarges, it will be back to 300 dpi because you have multiplied it by two. It's really tricky. Let's look at 1200 dpi. Let's say I've got a five inch Im image and I'm going to scan it, scan it at 1200 because I want it to be 20 inches wide. So if I want it to be 20 inches wide, I'm going to scan that image, that very small 5 inch image, at 1200 TPI, dpi so that by the time I enlarge it to 20 inches, it's back to 300 dpi because that's how much information is in those inches, in those dots. I can't change that. So all I can do is try to tell the scanner that I need more information, I need more dots. So in that 5 inch square, I don't want 300 dots in each inch. 
I want 1200 dots in each inch so that by the time I get larger, I'm back to 300 dots in each inch. That means my resolution is going to stay sound. It's going to still be readable when it's printed out at 300 dpi. It does get tricky. It's a little bit hard to get your head around this, but it's something that in graphic design and the world of illustration and print, you just have to memorize and understand, and you will get used to this. Just remember, if size goes up, resolution goes down. Size goes up, DPI goes down. So for this image, I'm going to, this is an, about an eight and a half by 11, and I do, am gonna just keep it like this. All right, so I clicked and dragged to get my selection area, and I'm going to scan it at 300 DPI in color. And you can see, yeah, that's about um, eight inches by 10 and a quarter or so. I'm going to save it just to my desktop. I'm gonna call it Merlin. And here's the other thing what type of file are you going to save it as? Now, right now it's set to a JPEG. I have a system where I save different types of scans to different type of suffixes so that I know what they are. Now, most printers these days, an actual um, offset printer is going to ask for either a PDF or a TIFF. I used to call a TIFF a can't mess with it file. Now that's no longer true because you can mess with pretty much anything in a digital environment. But back when the TIFF first came out, you really couldn't. Once you scanned something as a TIFF, that was it. That was the image for good. So I scan everything as a TIFF, which means that every time I see a TIFF suffix, suffix on a file, I know that's a scan. If I'm going to send it to a printer, I might save it as a PDF. One, that's what they want. Two, that tells me that's a print ready file. Now you've got a lot of other options in here. So we all probably have heard of JPEG. JPEG was the first file format that was made for online environments. So that is great for the web. Now you don't wanna send a JPEG to a printer. PNG and JPEG, you gotta think about those as being web environment. So if I have a file that has a JPEG on the end of it, I know that's for the web. Now the PNG and the GIF come in as slightly different. GIFs you've, have become a term for animation on the web. So if you've got a quick animation that's going on a cycle over and over and over again, that's a GIF. That wasn't what they originally were. The original uh, GIF was the first type of online file that could retain transparency. So let's say you had a logo and you wanted to put it against a colored background or an image background, you would save it as a GIF so that that background would drop out and you wouldn't have a white square around it. Well, nowadays GIFs mean that animation. And now the PNG is also transparent. So that has become kind of what the GIF used to be in that, again, if you want to save an image with a transparent background, you're probably gonna save it as a PNG. So know that if you save your file as either a JPEG, a PNG, or a GIF, it's probably going to be only online and that's where you're gonna be using it. Now, HEIC, that's another one I'm seeing more of. That is the format that a lot of phones will take images with. So a lot of photos, that are coming from phones are now coming with this HEIC suffix. My uh, system that we use at my university, Blackboard, does not like HEIC files. So a lot of times I actually have to go to a lot of trouble to open those to be able to view them or they're turned around or whatever. So I'm asking my students not to use HEIC files when they send them to me as finals. Um, but of course, in our COVID environment, you know, a lot of um, students have limitations with technology. So HEIC is becoming a little bit more mainstream, but it's still a fairly new term. And when they first started coming in, I was like, what is this HEIC? I'd never seen it before. Now I'm seeing a lot of it. BNP, BNP is bitmapped. That's more of an old term that we would use for newspaper printing. You're probably not going to hit a whole lot of needs for BMP. So we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on that. But get to know your suffixes, arrange your files using the suffixes, use them to your advantage so that you know what your file types are. Um, you could use any of them for any of the purposes I mentioned, but it really does help to keep you organized if you actually use them for spe uh, specific purposes. Anyway, so that tells you about um, 
resolution and suffixes. So if this file is something that I want to be high resolution that might go to a printer, I'm going to do 300 dpi at a TIFF and I'm not going to do any color correction because I want to do that myself when I go into Photoshop. I don't want my scanner doing this for me. Now that might change if say you don't have Photoshop or you don't have a really fancy image editing program, you might want to do some of your image correction here. And you could do uh, things like contrast, brightness, tint, uh, saturation, say it's in color, you want it to be really bright, you could do things like that. But I'm not going to do that for this one. So all of that said, everything's selected, I've got my DPI, I've got my file name, I've got where it's going, and I've got my suffix determined. I've also got it in color, even though it's a black and white image. I'm going to hit scan. This takes just a minute. So while it's scanning, I want to talk to you also about photography. Because you might not have a scanner. You might have to take a photograph and turn that file into a JPEG or a TIFF or a PDF. Now, photography is a whole nother beastie, but I can tell you the down and dirty way to do it is just make sure you have at least two light sources shining on your artwork from two different sides and that you've got your artwork on a nice flat surface. Uh, daylight can really help to be one of your light sources and then put two other light sources with it. Just make sure you're not getting any cast shadows from anything. Um, and you can get a pretty decent photograph. Make sure your phone is upright, that you're getting a vertical image and try to crop it as well as you can just by eyeballing it. That's a good way to get an image with a photograph if you must. So we can see, it, you actually you can't see, but I can see the image has popped up on my desktop as a, an actual file, merlin.tiff, which means that my scanning has been completed and successful. So that's good. So hopefully this will give you a little bit of information about how to do a proper scan, how to deal with resolution, and how to deal with um, file suffixes. And I hope this has been helpful. So I will see you again next time on Ease Art Tips. Thank you. Bye-bye.